Hello, my name is James Clegg. I work for the University of Edinburgh's Talbot Rice Gallery, and I'm the curator of our current exhibition, which is called Pine's Eye. Pine's Eye is a large group exhibition that runs across our distinctive spaces. It features the work of 12 international artists. And as the gallery is currently closed due to the 2020 pandemic, I've decided to make a series of short videos that look at each of these artists in turn. This week, we're going to look at the work of Johanna Unzueta. Johanna has created a large site-specific wall mural for the exhibition called One to One Resonance. And we're also showing a series of her felt sculptures, Lantern Wheel A, Gemalos Twins and Lantern Wheel B. I think Johanna's work gives us a really good opportunity to think about the way different forms describe our different relationships to nature. When I think about the current environmental crisis and the destruction of nature, I tend to think about a very specific set of forms. Specifically, I think about industrialization, this huge engine that really intensified power structures and hierarchies and led to this mass exploitation of people and resources across the world. And the kind of forms that industrialization produced are standardized, they're uniform, they're linear, they have a kind of geometry about them. They're all about this repeatability and scalability, uh, this hunger for more and more. They're also very dehumanized forms as well. They, they left out the body, they left out traces of people and left out traces of people's histories. Johanna's work, by contrast, is, is very different from this. All of Johanna's work is measured by eye and by hand. It's kind of improvised in a very um, embodied and live way. And what we really see in her works is, is traces of human presence. There's a, a sense, however abstract, of this kind of storytelling, of this encoding of human experience. In fact, the, the first drawings that Johanna started to make from which these large-scale murals arise were actually named after particular times and dates, as if they could capture something of how she was feeling at the time of making. Johanna's work more often than not also describes this kind of looping form as well. Um, it's very cyclical. It seems to be about a particular kind of rhythm that's established. Even when she does reference industrial forms, they tend to be forms that are about spinning or movement. They're cogs or they're flywheels. They're things that naturally cycle and loop around. And Johanna's kindly sent us some video from her studio where we can see the kind of things that she collects and draws inspiration from. Many of the materials used in Johanna's work are homemade as well. She spent time with indigenous women in South America, learning how to use natural pigments to dye her fabrics, for example. And here in the studio, she's showing us a project that she worked on to upcycle denim. So she would take uh, denim fibers, mix them with cotton, and then produce this new kind of uh, of fibrous material that then could be woven into these ropes. As we move across the studio, we're then able to see some of the preparatory drawings that Johanna makes uh, before um, realizing these large murals on site. Um, this is from one of her first murals, which was made in Mexico in 2017. It was made for the Sala de Art Publico Sequiros. And here we can see a preparatory drawing for a work that she made for the Sculpture Center in New York. And now we start to see 
some of the images that you'll be familiar with from the installation shots. As you can imagine, there's a very sort of organic process of translation between these maquettes and the final realized mural in, in the gallery space. And Johanna sees that as a very important part of her practice, that things are interpreted, they're remade, they're remade based on, on human judgment. And here we're seeing other works that she's starting to prepare for future projects, experimenting with different forms and with working on, on different materials. As an artist from Chile, Johanna is acutely aware of the struggles between indigenous people and colonial oppressors. So in, in South America, um, before Spanish colonization, a lot of the women would uh, spin and weave their own textiles. And this was very much about preserving memories of the past. There are iconic images of women spinning, and it appears to be a form of, of magic, of connection, of empowerment. And through weaving these different textiles, they would weave in different patterns and codes that would effectively teach them about their ancestors. So it's really tied up with the preservation of their culture. When the Spanish moved in, they imported sheep and they set up kind of proto-industrial looms as well. So that was a way of trying to bring in this very modern uh, Western view of uh, production. But still today, as a, as a sign of resistance, many women in South America still weave using this traditional backstrap loom. And I think this shows us the, the deeper currents and stories that run through Johanna's work. So what might first seem quite abstract, I think reveals something else. It's definitely not abstract in a modern art way. It's not abstracted from the body. It's not abstracted from experience. It's not abstracted from care and relationships and all the things that go into uh, this very embodied um, sensibility. And I think that sensibility is very important if we're going to have a more harmonious relationship with nature. 